I wanted to do a video on why I give my opinion that dust masks like this are useless. Well, they're not totally useless, but what I want to get into is you should never rely on a mask like this. So, obviously everybody knows these kind of dust masks. They go on your face like that, and they're designed to protect your respiratory system. However, I don't think a lot of people realise how these fully work. So, this one is, it says P2 on it, so that's particulate level 2. And on the back it has a tick box that says, you know, this is what each one stops. So basically, as you can see... A P3 one ticks nearly everything, but not, you know, everything. Now, the issue with these isn't that they can't stop the stuff, it's that they don't make a proper airtight seal, and let me demonstrate this. So, I'm going to put this one on. I'm assuming it's actually going to go on this way with this bit on my nose, but... So, hopefully this is starting to illustrate the problem. So, I've got this, you know, elasticated on, but if you look here, there's a bit of a gap, and there's going to be a bit of a gap where my chin is. So the problem with these masks is that they don't make an actual airtight seal. There's lots of areas that air can get in. Now, yes, everything here is filtered to particulate level 2 or 3 or whatever, depending on the mask is. But these things never make a good airtight seal. So the issue is that you're not going to get, you know, a decent level of protection because it's already curving on my chin. Because there's always going to be little gaps with it. And the issue is where there's a gap, air can get through. Air follows the path of least resistance. So if you have a gap, say, here in the mask, like I can actually feel there's a bit of a gap on both of my chin sides, when I inhale air, that air is not going to go through the filter, it's going to come around, meaning I'm going to be inhaling stuff I'm working with. So, obviously, that's not good. So, if I compare that with a proper respirator, even a half-face or a full-face respirator, I'll demonstrate this now with a full-face one, what you actually have is a much better strap system which gives you better protection. So let me demonstrate that. So I'll get out my Avon CT12. I'm not going to bother putting a filter on it, but obviously the filter would go on the side. That's a P3 filter. Offers a better level of protection than that dust mask. But in a sense, what the dust mask is, is inside this filter to work. Although this is P3, that's a P2, but in a sense it's the same stuff. A very fine sort of mesh filter layer. But if we look at a mask like this, You see, I can do an airtight seal test, and the mask is airtight. Now, obviously, this is still not ideal. Um, if you're in somewhere that's really contaminated, what they actually do is they do, um, you know, proper fit tests, and if it's really contaminated, they do a um, positive pressure system, because positive pressure means air is forcing its way out of the mask. So you're not going to use negative pressure to seal it, which is much safer. But regardless... The point I'm trying to make is that um, with a system like this, you've got several straps that are done up around your head. This one's got two at the bottom, two in the middle, two at the top. And what that means is you get a really good face seal around the mask. Obviously, you need a mask that fits your head properly, but I'm sure you can see that something like this is superior to something like this, where you don't even have a proper sort of mould. As you can see there, my skin's kind of moving a bit to the side. And that's because the force of the mask being on there is kind of making, the, you know, cheek welding. If I try and pull this off, it sticks to my skin. Um, obviously, enough force, yes, it will come loose. Enough moving around of the head, yes, there will be gaps. But compared to something like that, you know, this is a really good system because it makes a proper airtight seal. Now, as I was saying, with something like this, air follows the path of least resistance. So with something like this, when you've got a filter on one side, or filters on both sides, and you've got a really good sort of weld to your face with the mask straps being done tight enough, and one that fits your face shape, you know, you're going to get a really good seal. Whereas something like this, you can never get one that sits on your face properly because of the shape of it. It's not curved to your thing, it's a one-size-fits-all thing. So... That's what I want to point out as well. I'm sure dust masks aren't totally useless for, you know, really minor things. I would definitely recommend going for a half face or full face respirator with proper particulate filters simply because with something like this, even if you had, let's say, a full ABEC and P3 rated filter on it somehow, because it doesn't, you know, because it's only got an edge like that, all the uh, air is going to get in, whereas if you have... You know, something like this, it can't, because of literally the laws of physics following the path of least resistance. 
when you have a tight fitting respirator, the path of least resistance is through the filter. Where you have something that looks loose fitting, the air will come everywhere around it. So I think that's an important thing if you're removing asbestos or something like that, that you actually rely on the proper snug fitting mask, even if it offers the same filtering level. You want it in a half face or full face respirator done up tightly with elasticated straps, not rubber bands holding on something that doesn't do a proper face weld. So that's my reasoning on why you should always go for a half face or full face respirator, not a little dust mask like that.